Let's look at some of the facts relating to the record price increases in silver and gold. First we need to understand that the Federal Reserve is the primary party responsible for the current price increases in gold and silver. Beginning with the savings and loan crisis in 1990, each engineered crisis is growing in intensity and carnage. First there was the internet bubble crash, and then the real estate bubble meltdown. And now we are at the footsteps of an unprecedented acceleration of price increases in food and energy. In 2007, commodity prices soared when there was actually a slowdown in the global economy. There was no reason for commodity prices to go ballistic at that time, except for Federal Reserve intervention. The price of oil went from $78 to $147. High gas prices actually burdened the average U.S. consumer with an additional tax of $500 billion. That $500 billion hidden tax was one of many reasons we are in the current great non-recession. On CNBC, they often point to the dollar index and state that a weaker dollar is good for the export economy. Currently, the U.S. dollar index looks bad but it actually means nothing because it is being compared to other worldwide fiat currencies undergoing massive debasement. Worldwide central banks seem to be in a currency death dance racing each other to the bottom in the name of international competitiveness. Gold and silver is the only way to test the strength of our currency. The dollar is weakening against other currencies but when compared against the price of precious metals and raw materials we can see the true value of a U.S. Federal Reserve note. The truth is, gold and silver prices are just getting started. If you pay attention, the public is selling, not buying gold. I got $583. All I did was look through my drawer full of jewelry I never wear. Turn your unwanted or broken jewelry, gold, silver, platinum, rings, chains, and bracelets into cold hard cash from cashforgold.com. I had no idea my gold jewelry was worth so much money. What happened during the internet bubble? The average Joe was piling into tech stocks and many individuals were giving up their jobs so they could day trade full time. And we all know what transpired during the last death throes of the real estate bubble. People were buying at the peak three, four, five, ten homes and flipping every which way to make as little as $20,000. The common Joe buys into manias. When all your neighbors are hoarding and trading gold and telling you real estate is a waste of time and money, it may be the time to look at diversifying some of your investments out of gold and silver. What I personally see is 10 years of real estate stagnation and depreciation and at the same time 10 years of gold and silver appreciation. On a side note, jobs are not coming back to the US. To quote Dr. Mark Faber, companies would be out of their minds with healthcare reforms, government interventions and the uncertainty about future taxes in the US to even consider expanding in the US. Corporations are expanding in China, India, Vietnam, Bangladesh, Africa, and Brazil. The business world is an international place today, and if you run a corporation, whether you employ 50 or 10,000 people, you can choose where you invest your money in terms of capital spending. Instead of expanding factories and employing more U.S. workers, I would think companies would be reducing employees rather than hiring more.